Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back for another video on this channel. This is the second part, uh, second programming tutorial part for the pyramid trading program. So I will show you how to add the uh, stop loss now. Also, how we can modify the stop loss of all the open positions if we if we have a new position. So first of all, uh, yeah, setting the the stop loss for the initial position is very easy. I showed this multiple times on the channel already. So I will just go through the steps. Quickly, let me rearrange this a bit so it looks more sexy. So this looks fine now, I would say. And now we have the needed space to calculate the uh, stop loss, right? So let's go with, yeah, let's first get the, yeah, we don't really need to get the entry here. So let's calculate the stop loss for buy positions is of course ask minus ask multiplied with the SA percent divided by 100. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Then we will need to add the position, uh, the, the, the parameters here on the way to get to the price and the stop loss. And that's pretty much it. Then here for the sell position, same thing, different calculation, because it's a sell position, obviously. And then let's here say, uh, yeah, symbol ask SL. And actually we can we, we, could, we could do it up here and uh, just set this first stop loss <coughs> or in general just the stop loss for all of the positions here. Also for the pyramid positions because why not? Always a good idea to have a little stop loss in place to secure our losses. And yeah, that's how we have the the, the, like the normal stop loss. And now I want to make sure that if there is a, another position, like if there are more than one positions, or if we send the second position, we kind of have to modify all of the positions. So we could do it directly here after sending the order. We could also do it here when we loop through the orders. And I don't know where I want to do it. I mean, we could do it here. Yeah, we could. Let's just find the, the first position here maybe. Or let's find the smallest or, wait, I'm confused. Let's find the last position. We, we need to find the open price of the previous position, right? The open price of the previous position. So what we can do is, um, this position time is greater than last position time. We can just, like the easiest thing would be, I think, Thing to create a global variable where we store the position open price of the last position. Wait, we don't even have to do this because we have the last position price here already. That's even even better. So what we can do here is it's 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 super simple. We don't use the. Uh, Wait, let's, <laughs> sorry for the confusion. I was uh, not see, thinking this through before I started the recording button. So what we want to do is here, after sending, or, or the stop loss for the second order should be placed as at last position price. Last position price. And then here we will have another loop. I is equal to position. Positions total, just the normal loop that we always use to loop through the positions, getting the positions uh, or selecting the positions using the index here. Then checking if position symbol equal to chart symbol and position magic equal to magic. Yeah, might as well put this in one line. 
like this. And then if we have a position from our expert advisor, then we want to make sure that we modify this position with the new stop loss. So we check if last position price is greater than position stop loss. And in this case, we modify the stop loss. Position modify, um, position ticket, last position price as stop loss and position take profit. Yeah, this was easier and quicker than I thought this would be. Not even worth a, a, a separate tutorial actually, but yeah, here we are. So same thing of course for sell positions, but here we want to check if the last position price is smaller than the position stop loss. And here for sell positions, it always makes sense to check if the stop loss is maybe zero. Because in this case, we also want to modify. But this, this should be it, actually. So um, let's give it a go and see if the stop loss is modified, if we see more and more positions. OK, so here we are. First position is open and hit the stop loss. Whoopsie. Uh, next position. And whoa, there are now two positions. So let's see what's going on here. And we do see both positions are secured at the position open price of the first position. So we are good. So let's see, yeah, okay, stopped out. I mean, that's the problem if you use stop losses, right? You will get stopped out and you miss all of the profits. Maybe I'm just too, um, I, I, I need to modify the settings, I think, if I work on the one hour chart. And because the moves here are kind of big in gold, I think. But yeah, sometimes like here, you can see you definitely have the chance to open multiple positions. And if everything goes well, you can save them. And here, this was a nice and clean profit. So you can see, of course, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, like always. And sometimes you just have to modify the settings a bit. So maybe let's say um, buffer percent 0 0.5 maybe and initial stop loss like 1% maybe. This will make sure that we do see more positions. But um, yeah, I mean, actually this is a, a, this should be enough to have a working strategy, I think. So let's give it another, another go here. Let's test this one more time and see what's going on. So now you can see the initial stop loss is further away from the uh, on price of the first position. So this will make sure that the EA has some more room to breathe. Also, uh, yeah, we will not open the positions so close to each other because I have the 0.5% as a buffer now. But here we should see uh, more positions soon. And then, yeah, we will of course also see the position stop loss for both positions is modified. If this is good or bad in the long run, I don't know. This is something you would have to test. And um, yeah, this is something you can test now since you have the program, but you can see now everything has more room to breathe. And yeah, this is how you can write a pyramid expert advisor. It's super easy, super simple. A lot of you guys requested it. So I just made the tutorial for you guys and you can use this for your own testing now. Let's um, quickly watch what happens if we go into the negative trend or the, the sell trend on the, on the daily chart. And yeah, there we are in the in the in the sell trend already. So you can see price drop below the higher time frame moving average. We are in a sell trend. And now we will of course do the exact same thing here. So second position, positions are uh, somewhat secured. And then there is uh, more, more position. And now we should be above the daily uh, moving average again. Yeah, this is how the strategy will now behave always. And if there are strong trends, I think you can definitely make money with this. Also, since you now learned how to use this pyramid um, trading approach or how to code it, you can write as many strategies as you want. You can, of course, use different mechanisms to enter positions. You don't have to use the, the moving average indicator here. This was just a quick and easy example because uh, everyone knows how to code this moving average strategy, but you can adapt this, of course, with different indicators or different 
mechanisms, using highs and lows, whatever you feel like, you are free to adapt and modify the, the strategy uh, however you want. This was just to answer all of the questions that were below my last videos about the um, Pyramid Trading Expert Advisor. Hope you liked this. And let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments. And that's it. I'm out. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye.